Welcome to Truth, Money, and Freedom for our second podcast today, Wednesday, February 20th, 2019. Uh, here's a story on Venezuela. And Venezuela is something I've been following for four years, by the way. But uh, I, I want to clarify something in this story here um, as I read the title to you. It says, uh, Venezuela isn't just a failed state. It's a failure of the left. Well, that's not entirely true. It's not entirely accurate. And I read the, the first paragraph here. As Venezuela careens toward a further economic and political collapse, the blame game is heating up. In the U.S., Republicans are labeling the country socialist, using Venezuelan problems as a weapon against the more left-leaning Democrats. Commentators on the left, in contrast, are arguing that Venezuela is more of a failed petro-state with bad leadership rather than a test of socialist ideas. Who is right? That's a very good question. Who is right? Now, as I said, I've been looking at this for four years, and I want to say Venezuela failed because of something that most people aren't looking at right now or don't want to look at, and that is central planning, which is a central bank that has control of the economy, along with corruption within their government. So the bad leadership is correct. They did have severe corruption within their uh, leadership. A failed petro state, well, they could say that, I guess, because, you know, the price of oil went down and that hurt them. Um, but is it because they're socialist that this happened? Well, the answer to that, purely in the aggregate, is no. Um, the reason Venezuela is a failed state is because they had severe corruption, sweetheart deals, crony capitalism, fascism, call it what you will. Um, you know, basically all kinds of corruption within the government coupled with central planning, which is the central bank that sets interest rates, you know, sets mon monetary policy, prints the money. Those are the two issues that actually created the problem in the first place. However, from my opinion, socialism was an accelerant uh, to the problem, but it is not the beginning of the problem. The beginning of the problem always, always, always starts with the central bank. And when you have a central bank that can print as much money as the government wants, it will always breed corruption. Corruption stems from this. It always comes from this. And I'm doing this video here for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, I've, I would like to point out that Ellie, 1978, did some interviews. I'll show you real quick here. Uh, with some folks in Venezuela. And I am going to link those videos down below in the description section because the first thing you want to do when you hear about a country failing like this is you want to talk to people who live in that country to get their perspective on what happened. And then also what you want to do is find out what they would do different if they knew it was coming. Because, my friends, I'm here to tell you the ingredients that led to this, <laughs> this failed souffle that we call Venezuela exists in every nation. Every nation has corrupt government and every nation has uh, central planning through basically a central banking system in which they print, you know, an enormous amount of money. They give the government whatever they want at interest and they can use that money for whatever they want. So when you have <coughs> central planning on that level, it's real, real easy to breed corruption. You know, and I'm older, so I called it fascism when, you know, basically business interests mingle with, you know, political interests, you know, to do something that's in their mutual interest against the best interest of the people. That's fascism. Uh, they're calling it uh, crony capitalism now. So let's just call it crony capitalism because that's what most people know today. Um, so we had crony capitalism in Venezuela. Well, we have it here in the United States. And we could go down the list and talk about the countries that are literally right behind Venezuela. Argentina, Turkey, Iran, Italy. Um, <clears throat> holy crap, there's a ton of countries that are going down the same road right now. They're just not quite as far along as Venezuela is. But I won't blame socialism. I am not a socialist. I'm not a communist. I'm a libertarian. But I'm not going to just throw a label out there and say, well, this is, this is socialism. This is why the country failed socialism. That is not true. 
That is not true. Socialism was simply an accelerant. It was throwing gasoline on a fire that already existed. And that's corruption and central planning. And the sooner that the world kind of realizes this is what happens in a Keynesian economic model, which we all exist in, um, let me put it in other terms, basically our currencies all around the world are based on nothing. There's nothing backing up our currencies. What backs up the currency of the American people called, you know, the U.S. dollar is faith and confidence. That's it. We used to be gold-backed, but Nixon took us off the gold standard in 1971 and thereby taking the world off the gold standard in 1971 because basically the entire world's currencies were always backed up by the dollar and then the dollar was backed up by gold. Now there's just nothing backing up currencies anymore. So hyperinflation is going to happen in nations that don't back up their 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 currency with something something that can keep it in check and since you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be the kind of guy who says before everybody here on youtube that every single politician in every single country is corrupt what i will say is there's um, probably a lot more bad ones than there are good ones and the corrupt politicians will take you down this path with the central bankers, with the big businesses. This is crony capitalism. This is central planning. This is what they do. And it always, always, always goes down this path. So people in Venezuela, I pray for them. They're starving down there. There's a lot of people down there homeless and starving, and the government isn't doing anything about it because they really can't do anything about it at this point. They've gone too far down the hyperinflation path. Now, they could do a currency reset, which they're not willing to do yet, and there's reasons for it. We'll get into a hyperinflation podcast soon and explain why it happens and what the outcome is and why they let it happen in the first place, why they don't stop it from happening. So this is an interesting story to look at. I'm going to link up Ellie's videos down below, but I just want people all around the world to know, anyone who listens to this podcast, your country has the same ingredients as Venezuela's did corruption and central planning. In other words, a central bank that controls monetary policy in your country along with a corrupt government. Those are the only two ingredients you need to become Venezuela, and we all have them. So we need to be very, very careful. As Trump took you know, credit for the economy in the United States, which he should not have done when, he, you know, when the stock market went up and when supposedly unemployment went down, uh, we're actually in pretty rough shape here in the United States. As we see businesses closing right and left in our neighborhoods, in our cities, we see these businesses closing up, yet the media keeps telling us we've never had a better economy. The media keeps telling us that unemployment is at <clears throat> the lowest levels we've seen since whenever. Um, but at the same time, why are all these businesses closing? Oh, and then, of course, the media will say, well, it's because it's all going to online sales. Why are online sales also going down? This is a fact. They're, <laughs> so they're going down as well. Uh, people have run out of money. They've run out of credit. So we're starting down this path now. It's important for people to understand. We here in the United States are going down this path. Europe is going down this path right now. And we're going to do a podcast real soon on Italy because Italy's in big trouble and they could drag down the whole EU with them. So Britain, get out of the EU before it goes down. You don't, you don't have to go with the old passe argument that misery loves company. We need to be part of the EU while it's going down. Nah, England, get out. The, the EU will fail just fine without you. So you don't have to go down with them. That's kind of what I wanted to say, gang. I just wanted to let you know that the Venezuela thing, there's all, the, there's all this throwing labels around socialist, you know, petrostate, you know, bad leadership. Um, that's not the truth. It's just not the truth. It's the same ingredients we all have in all of our countries that brought down Venezuela with socialism as an accelerant. That is the truth. That is what's happened to Venezuela. People of Venezuela know this. They've lived through it. Why don't we listen to them instead of listening to our U.S. politicians that lie to us all the time anyway? 
it, that's my message for today. Um, so I hope you all have a wonderful day, and thank you for spending a few more minutes with Truth, Money, and Freedom. Again, gang, if, if you're interested in coming in and visiting with us in Truth, Money, and Freedom, there is a link down below in the description section in which you can create an account in Discord and actually uh, come in and talk to us. We have a, a voice chat. We have text chat. And you could come in and talk to us about anything Truth, Money, and Freedom. We'd love to have you. Have a wonderful day.